The use of infinity with limits. So if I take the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x, keep in mind. So x approaches infinity if I am to use, say, 10. Then 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. If I choose 100, 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. 1,000 that would be 0 0.001. Remember, I'm taking the limit as x approaches infinity. I'm still at 1,000. And 1 over x is already at a 0 0.001. So as x increase, 1 over x decrease, right? So the limit as x approaches infinity, any number divided by x as x grows to positive or negative infinity will yield the same result because whether you say positive zero or negative zero that means it's a zero similarly if I look at 1 over x then I take the limit as x approaches 0 say 0 0.1 1 over 0 0.1 is 10 if I take 0 0.001 then 1 over 0 0.001 is a 1000 as x approaches 0 of 1 over x, that limit will be either positive infinity or negative infinity, depending whether you're approaching 0 from the right or the left. So in general, when we're taking limits, of course, if I'm looking at a number over infinity, plus or minus, we say that's 0. And if I look at 1 over 0, I say that's infinity, plus or minus. Also, Anytime you're taking limit with infinities and you're trying to make a decision, think of infinity as an extremely large number. If you have two large numbers and you add them, that's infinity. If you take a very large number multiplied by a positive number, that still is infinity. If you take a very large number, multiply it by a negative number, that becomes negative infinity. The two the, the undetermined cases that come up for us is when you have a zero times infinity, that's a problem. Infinity minus infinity is an issue, and infinity divided by infinity. Those, I'm not sure. I have to manipulate the problem a bit, and that's going to come up as I do a couple of examples. Now, the easiest way out whenever you're dealing with rational functions, if you take in the limit as x approaches specifically infinity, is to divide by the highest power term of the denominator. Divide each term by that. That will ensure that the denominator will be a number, not an infinity. So if I divide this by itself, that's a 1 minus 1 over x squared. Uh, x squared over x cubed is 1 over x. 2x over x cubed is x squared plus 3 over x cubed. And I know this is not the traditional method. Any number over x will approach 0. So it's not traditional to start writing these things. But that's how we're going to decide on what this limit is. And I'm going to get 0 over 1, which is 0. And that's how did I determine those limits. So if I look at b, that is still a rational function. I would divide by the highest term, term of the denominator, which is x squared in this case. You could divide by 4x squared or just x squared, just the variable part. That would be 3 plus 3 over x minus 1 over x squared, all over 4, minus 2 over x plus 5 over x squared. As x approaches infinity, each of those will approach 0, and you're left with a 3, 4. So anytime I'm taking limit, as far as x approaches positive or negative infinity, I do the same thing. Divide by x squared each of those. That would be the limit as x approaches infinity. That would be 2x minus 1 over x minus 4 over x squared over 1 minus 5 over x. Again, divided by the highest power term of the denominator guarantees that the denominator 
does not become infinity, and therefore you are voiding an infinity over infinity. Now, as x approaches infinity, any number over x will approach 0. I'm left with this. As x approaches infinity, well, 2 times infinity is really infinity. So this diverge. If I look at the second case, I'm going to divide by the highest power term of the denominator. In this case, x under a radical. That's really what I'm dividing with. So that's the limit as x approaches infinity. So with a radical, that's the square root of 1 plus 2 over x, 1 over radical x, and x over x to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves. As x approaches infinity, that will be a 0, that will be a 0. You're left with the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the 3 halves over 1. And as x approaches infinity, of course, that is infinity as well. So I left this part of the lesson for now. It's a really short part. Here, as x approaches infinity, there's no fraction. That's really infinity minus infinity. That's an issue. So what I could do, I could factor an x out. And I notice that as x approaches infinity, this would be infinity into 1 minus, and this would be infinity. So that's infinity. Now, 1 minus infinity is negative infinity. Again, it's not traditional to deal with limit with infinities like that, but if a limit is involved, think of a very large number times a very small number. Isn't that going to be negative? Radicals are a bit different. As x approaches infinity, this will approach infinity. Minus, but here I can't factor an x out. With radicals, there's one way of proceeding, and Hopefully, you know the trick by now. You multiply by the conjugate. What's the conjugate? The same exact two terms, except whatever the sign is, the conjugate is the opposite of that. What that does, that guarantees me, so if I have a minus b, I multiply by the same thing, that guarantees me the first squared minus the second squared. So for the top, I'm guaranteed the first squared. Well, the square cancels the radical minus the second squared. And that would be the limit as x approaches infinity. Those cancel out negative 3x over the square root of x squared plus 3x plus x. And here I'm going to divide by x squared. In reality, that's the square root of x squared because that's under a radical. I'm going to get the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 3x over x because as x approaches infinity, that's always positive. 1 plus 3 over x plus 1. As x approaches infinity, I notice I'm left with a negative 3 at the top, the square root of 1 plus 1, and that's simply negative 3 halves. So that's the only portion left out of this section, and that includes 2.